from around the globe, it's theCUBE. Covering Upgrade 2020, the NTT Research Summit. Presented by NTT Research. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. Uh, we're in our Palo Alto studio for our ongoing coverage of the Upgrade 2020. It's the NTT Research Conference. It's our first year covering the event. It's actually the first year for, for the event, the inaugural uh, year for the event. So we're really excited to get into this. It's basic research that drives a whole lot of, of innovation and we're really excited to have our next guest. He is Kazuhiro Gomi. He is the president and CEO of NTT Research. Kazu, great to see you. Hi, good to see you. Yeah, so f let's jump into it. So this event, like many events, was originally scheduled, I think, for March at Berkeley. Uh, clearly, COVID came along and you guys had to make some changes. So I wonder if you can just share a little bit about, you know, your thinking in terms of, you know, having this event, getting this great information out, but having to do it in a digital way and kind of rethinking, you know, the conference strategy. Sure, yeah. So. Um, NTT Research, we started our operations about a year ago, uh, July 2019. And uh, I always wanted to show the world that uh, to give an uh, update of uh, what we have done in the areas of basic and fundamental research. So uh, we plan to do that in, in March, as you mentioned. However, you know, that uh, the rest of the, to some extent, history. We needed to cancel the uh, cancel the event and then uh, decided to do this uh, this time of the year uh, through virtual. Uh, something we learned, however, not everything is bad. Uh, by doing this virtual, uh, we can certainly reach out to so many peoples around the globe at the same time. So we're taking, uh, I think, uh, trying to get the best out of it. Right, right. So you've got a terrific lineup. So let's jump into it a little bit. So for, first thing, just about NTT research. You know, we're all familiar, if you've been around for a little while, about Bell Labs. You know, we're fortunate to have Xerox Park up the street here in Palo Alto. You know, these are, you know, kind of famous institutions doing basic research. People probably aren't as familiar, at least in the States, around NTT basic research. But when you think about real bottom line basic research and how it contributes, ultimately it gets into products and solutions and healthcare and all kinds mm -hmm. of places. How, how should people think about basic research and its role in ultimately, you know, coming to market in, in, in products and services and all different things. But you're, you're getting way down into the weeds, into the really, really, uh, basic hardcore, you know, technology. Sure, yeah, so let me uh, just, uh, from my perspective, define the basic research uh, versus uh, some other dev uh, research and development. Um, for us, that the basic research means that we don't necessarily have any, like a product roadmap or commercialization roadmap. Uh, we just uh, want to look at the fundamental core technology of all things. And uh, from the time scale perspective, obviously not that uh, we're not looking at uh, something new, you know, thing next year, next six months, that kind of thing. We are looking at uh, five, five years or sometimes more, longer than that, potentially 10 years down the road. But uh, you mentioned about Bell Lab and, uh, and uh, Xerox Park. Yeah, uh, well, there used to be such organizations in the United, United States. However, well, arguably uh, those days have kind of gone, uh, but uh, uh, so, so that's what's going on in the United States. In Japan, NTT uh, have, has have done quite a bit of uh, basic research over the years. And uh, uh, so we wanted to, I think because that uh, a lot of the cases that uh, we can talk about, uh, you know, end of the Moore's laws, and then uh, you know we are kind of scary time for that the energy consumptions and the ITs. We need to make some huge, uh, big fundamental change uh, has to happen to sustain our you know long term um, development of the ITs and then basically at, uh, for the sake of human beings. Right, right. So, uh, so NTT sees that and also we've been doing quite a bit of uh, basic research in Japan. So we recognize this is the time that the, let's expand this activities. And then by doing, uh, as a part of doing so is let open up the research lab in Silicon Valley where certainly we can 
really work better, work easier to with uh, the global talents in this field. So that's how we started uh, this endeavor, uh, like I said, last year. And uh, so far, uh, it's a tremendous uh, uh, progress that we have made. So, so that's where we are. That's great. So just you know, a little bit more specific. So you guys are broken down into three labs, as I understand. You've got the physics, the PHI, which is physics and informatics, uh, the CIS lab, cryptography and information security, and the MEI lab, medical and health informatics. And the conference is really laid out uh, along those same tracks. Really day one is, is a whole lot of stuff, or excuse me, day two around the, the, the physics and informatics, day, the next day is really cryptography and, and um, information security, and then the medical and health informatics. So those are you know, super uh, interesting, but very diverse you know, kind of buckets of, of fundamental research. And you guys are attacking all three of those pillars. Yep, so, um, so day one, a uh, general session, uh, is that we cover uh, the whole, all, all the topics. And, but uh, just a whole uh, general topics, I, I think some people want to understand, uh, those who want to understand what NTT research is all about, certainly day one will be a great day to be, uh, to understand more holistic what we are doing. However, given the, the type of research topic that we are tackling, um, we need the deep dive, dive conversations, very specific to each topic uh, by the specialists and the experts in the, each field. Therefore, we uh, have uh, day two, three, and four for uh, specific uh, topics that we're going to uh, talk about. So, uh, so th that's the configuration of the uh, of this uh, conference. Right, right, I, and I love. It. I just have to read a few of the session breakout titles because I think they're just amazing, and I always love learning new vocabulary words: coherent nonlinear dynamics and combinatorial optimization, uh, language multipliers, uh, indistinguishability, obfuscation from well-founded assumptions, fully deniable communications and computations. I mean. A, a brief history of the quasi-adaptive NICKS, which I don't even know what that stands for. <laughs> um, really some interesting topics. But, but the other thing that jumps out when you go through the sessions is the representation of universities and really the top flight universities. So you've got, you've got people coming from MIT, Caltech, Stanford, Notre Dame, Michigan, the list goes on and on. Um, Talk to us about the role of academic institutions and how NTT you know, works with um, and in conjunction with academic institutions and how at this basic research level, you know, kind of the commercial academic interest uh, align and come together and work together to really move this basic research down the, down the road. Sure, so um, the, the working with academic, uh, especially the top uh, top-notch universities are crucial for us. Obviously, that's where that uh, experts in each field of the uh, basic research are uh, doing their uh, super activities, and we definitely need to get connected, and then we need to accelerate our activities uh, and uh, together uh, from uh, from uh, with the NTT's researchers. So. Uh, that was that has been uh, kind of one of the number one priority for us to jumpstart and uh, get get some going. So uh, as you mentioned, Jeff, that we are we have a lineup of uh, professors and the researchers from each uh, top-notch universities uh, joining uh, to this uh, event and talking at uh, at general uh, talking at different sessions. So. Uh, I'm sure that uh, those who are listening in uh, to those sessions, you will learn um, well what's going on from the entity's mind uh, or, or entity researcher's mindset uh, mind uh, to tackle each problem. But uh, at the same time, you will get to hear that top level uh, researchers and professors in each field. So you, I believe this is going to be a Kind of unique, uh, certainly, uh, session that to understand uh, what it's like in uh, in a research field of uh, quantum computing, 
encryptions and then uh, medical informatics right. of the world. Right. So uh, that's uh, that, I'm sure it's going to be a pretty great uh, lineups. Oh, that you oh get to. absolutely. Yeah. A lot of information exchange. And I'm not going to ask you to pick your favorite child because that would be unfair. But what I am going to do is I noticed too that you also write for the Forbes Technology uh, Council member, so you're you're publishing on Forbes, and one of the articles that you published relatively recently was about biological digital twins, and this is a, this is a topic that I'm really interested in. You know, we used to do a lot of stuff with GE, and there was always a lot of conversation about digital twins for turbines and motors, and you know, kind of all this big heavy industrial equipment, so that you could get ahead of the curve in terms of anticipating maintenance, and you know, basically, you know, mm -hmm. kind of run simulations of its lifetime. Neat concept. Now, and that's applied to people in biology, whether that's your heart or maybe it's a bigger system, your cardiovascular system, or the person as, as, a, as a whole. I mean, that, that just opens up so much interesting opportunities in terms of modeling people and being able to run simulations if they do things different, I would presume, you know, eat different, walk a little bit more, um, exercise a little bit more. And you wrote about it. So I wonder if you could share, you know, kind of your excitement about the potential uh, for digital twins in the medical space? Sure, so um, I think that the benefit is very clear for a lot of people, I, I would hope, that the ones uh, that basically the computer system can simulate or emulate your own body, your, you know, not just a generic human body, it's the body, body for Kazu Gomi at the age of whatever. <laughs> and uh, so if you get that uh, precise simulation of your body, you can do a lot of things. Oh, you meaning, um, I think a medical professional can do a lot of things. Uh, you can predict uh, what's going to happen to my body in the next year, six months, whatever. Or uh, if, you, if I'm feeling sick for whatever the reasons and then the the doctor want to prescribe a few different medicines, but you can really test it out, uh, different kind of medicines, not to you, but to the, the twin, uh, the medical twin. Then obviously a little, a little bit safer to do uh, some kind of, you know, uh, some specific medicines or whatever. So, so anyway, um, those are the kind of visions that we have. Uh, and I have to admit that uh, there's a lot of things technically we have to overcome and uh, it, it will take a lot of years to get there. But I think, I, I think it's a pretty good goal to define. Uh, so, so we said we did it and I talked with a couple different uh, experts and uh, I am definitely more convinced that this is a very nice goal to set. Uh, how, however, well, just uh, talking about the goal, just talking about those kind of futuristic thing, you may just end up with a science fiction. So we need to be uh, more specific. So we have certainly researchers are breaking down into different pieces how to get there. Um, uh, again, it's going to be a pretty long journey, but uh, we are starting from that to try to get the digital twin for the cardiovascular system. Uh, so basically, uh, the, the create your own heart. And uh, again, the important part is that the, this model of, of my heart is very similar to your heart, Jeff, but uh, it's really not identical. It's, it is somewhat different. Right, right. So uh, we are looking on it and uh, th there are certainly some, uh, we're not the only one uh, thinking something like this. There are definitely like-minded researchers in the world. So we are gathered together with, uh, with, those, uh, with those folks and then come up with the exchanging the ideas and coming up with that, the plans and you know, ideas. Uh, that's where we are. But uh, like you said, this is really an exciting goal and exciting project. Right, and, and, and I like the fact that, you know, you, you uh, consistently in all the background uh, material that I've picked up uh, preparing for this today, you know, this focus on tech for good and tech for helping um, 
the human species do better down the road. In another topic, in another blog post you talked about, and specifically, what are 15 amazing technologies contributing to the greater good? And you highlighted cryptography. Uh, so there's a lot of mm -hmm. interesting conversations around encryption and, and the pending you know, kind of commercialization of quantum computing and how that can break all the existing kind of encryption and there's going to be this whole renaissance in crypt cryptography. Why did you pick that amongst the entire palette uh, of technologies you can pick from? What's special about cryptography for helping people in the future? Okay, so um, the encryption, I think most of the people, just when you hear the study of uh, encryption, you may think that uh, you know what what the the goal of this these researchers or researches. Uh, you may think that you want to make your the encryption more robust and more you know more difficult to break. That's uh, you can probably imagine. That's the type of research that we are doing. Right. And right. yes, yes, we are doing that. But uh, that's not the only direction that we are working on. Uh, we, our researchers are working on different kind of uh, encryptions and uh, basically encryptions controls that the who, uh, well, you can just reveal say part of the data being encrypted or depending upon that the, uh, kind of attribute of uh, whoever has the key, the information being revealed are slightly different. Those kind of encryption, uh, well, it's kind of hard to explain uh, verbally, but uh, uh, functional encryption, they call, is, uh, is becoming a reality. And uh, I believe uh, those inherent uh, data itself has that such you know, the protection mechanism and also controlling who has access to the information is uh, one of the keys to address that uh, the current status. Current status, what I mean by that is that, uh, you know, more connected world we are going to live and uh, more information are created uh, through IOTs and all that kind of stuff, more sensors out there. I think, uh, so it is great on the one side that uh, we can do a lot of things, but at the same time, there's uh, tons of concerns from the perspective of privacy and securities and stuff. And then how to make those things happen together, uh, well, while addressing the concern and leverage all the benefit, you, well, you can create super complex accessing systems, but those things, I'm, I, I, I hate to say that, but it's, it, there are some inherently bringing in some vulnerabilities and break at some point, right? which right. we don't want to see. Right. So uh, I think that having those securities and privacy mechanisms in that the file itself and is, I think that one of the key to address those issues, uh, again, get the benefit of that, the connectedness and then while maintaining and then uh, maintaining the privacy and security for the future. Right. So, and then that's, uh, you know, in the end will be the better better for everyone and the better better society. So um, I, I could pick other <laughs> technology, <laughs> but uh, I, I felt like this is easier for me to explain right. to uh, a lot of people. So that's mainly the reasons that I went that direction. Right, well you, you keep publishing, yeah. so I'm sure you'll work your way through most of the technologies over a period of time. But it, you know, it's, it's, it's really, um, it's good to hear, you know, there's a lot of talk about uh, security, not enough about privacy. There's, you know, usually the regs and, and, the, and the compliance laws lag mm -hmm. uh, what's kind of happening in the marketplace. So it's good to hear that that's, that's really a, a, a piece of the conversation because without the privacy, um, you know, the other stuff is is not not as attractive and we're seeing all types of issues that are coming up and the regs are catching up. So privacy right. is a super important piece. But the other thing mm -hmm. I think is, is so neat is to is to be exposed, not being an academic, not being in this basic research every day, but have the opportunity to really hear at this level of detail um, the amount of work that's being done by big brain smart people to move these basic technologies along. We deal often 
in, in you know, kind of higher level applications versus the stuff that's really going on under the cover. So really a great opportunity to learn more and hear from and probably mm -hmm. understand some, understand not all, uh, about some of these great, you know, kind of baseline uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. Really good stuff. Yep. Yeah, so thank you for, uh, for inviting us uh, for the first one and we'll be excited to uh, sit in on some sessions and I'm going to learn what that, what's that one phrase that I got to learn? The N-I-K-Z-T-N-I-Z-K-S. Um, <laughs> N-I-Z-K-S. <laughs> yeah, N-I-Z-K-S, the Brief History of Quasi-Adaptive N-I. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kazuo, I'll give you the, you the, the final yeah. word. <laughs> You've been working on this thing for over a year. You know, I'm sure you're excited to finally kind of let it out to the world. I wonder if you have any final thoughts you want to share before we send people back off to their sessions. Uh, well, let's see. Uh, I'm sure when you, if you're watching this video, you are almost there for that uh, actual summit. Uh, it, it's about to start. And uh, so enjoy, the, uh, hope you enjoy the summit. And uh, uh, in a physical, well, I mentioned about uh, the benefit of this virtual, you know, we can reach out to many people, but obviously there's a, uh, also a flip side of the coin as well, uh, physical with the physical, we can get more spontaneous conversations and uh, more in-depth uh, discussion. Certainly we can do it, uh, perhaps not today. It's difficult, more difficult to do it. But uh, yeah, I encourage you to, I think I encourage my uh, researchers uh, and TT side as well to basically communicate uh, with all of you, uh, potentially, uh, hopefully, then, uh, you know, to have more in-depth meaningful conversations, just uh, starting from here. So um, just uh, feel comfortable, perhaps uh, just uh, feel comfortable uh, to reach out uh, to me and then all the other NTT folks. And then uh, also that the researchers from other organizations, I'm sure they're looking for this type of uh, interactions moving forward as well. So. Terrific. Well, thank you for that open invitation. And uh, you heard it, everybody. Reach out and, and, and touch base and communicate and engage. And it's not quite the same as being physical in the halls, but but, but you can talk to a whole lot more people. Uh, so, uh, Kazu, again, thanks for inviting us. Congratulations on the event and uh, really glad to be here covering it. Yeah, thank you very much, Jeff. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. He's Kazu, I'm Jeff. We are at the Upgrade 2020, the NTT Research Summit. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.